Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop, and it's Tech Talk number eighty six. Yeah, baby, don't, don't eighty six it, man. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's yeah eighty six times we have done Tech Talk. You know, plus if you throw in the almost two hundred episodes before that, before we started doing this, anyway, We've if you've probably got talked a about microphones a few times, right? <laughs> That's yeah, the few a few times. What's the best <laughs> microphone for voiceover? <laughs> Our favorite. Uh, yes. So if you've got a question about your home voiceover studio, throw it in the chat room right this time, right at this time, right now, and George and I will discuss it in the next segment. So are you ready, George? I certainly am. Okay, good. It's time for voiceover body shop tech talk right now. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect, JMC Demos, when quality matters, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Tech Talk. Oh. Tech Talk. An early Tech Talk. Yeah. So you guys get to see us. You know, some people join us for Tech Talk. Some people join us when we do our guest interview. But the people who've come for the guest interview get to hear Tech, tech Talk now. And they're going to go, this is fabulous. Why don't they do this like every other week? <laughs> well, we used to do Tech Talk. We used to do the tech stuff before the guests. But we decided right. rather than make a guest wait around for us to finish, we would just have them first. And that's the way it's been quite a few years now but yeah. today because our guest is uh deposed is that the word deposed Indisposed? no no, no th that would mean he's he's in like a legal six uh, yeah and he's not decomposed <laughs> either <laughs> whatever the reason de deposed he's means he has been removed from office okay thank you whether by force or by <laughs> i like big random words <laughs> And just use them properly. Isn't isn't there a, a word? Isn't there terminology for the misuse of words? Malaprop. Boom. <laughs> and you didn't misuse it, so that's you right. weren't ironic about it. I think that's a malaprop. <laughs> a malaprop? Yeah, that's I think that's the word I remember. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Highly technical talk here, but by any way, <laughs> if you're wondering why why we're talking about tech, it's what George and I do. One of the things that, you know, we, we try to fill our days with all sorts of fun stuff, whether it's flying down a mountainside on a, on a bike or playing with old radios. But most of the time we're dealing with you and your home voiceover studios. And we've been doing it for a long time. There's a lot of people out there, apparently a lot of coaches out there that'll tell people, oh yeah, yeah. Use one of these, but not how to use one of these. Mm hmm but and and George and I usually end up mopping up afterwards you know, <laughs> because we know how to do this kind of stuff. And it's usually like, oh, God, what did this person tell you? Well, if you want to get the right information and not be intimidated and get that boulder of technology craziness off your shoulders, you can work with one of us because we're going to give you the right answers. We're going to show you how to do it right. And that's the most important thing when it comes to a home voiceover studio. If you don't have a home voiceover studio, you're not really participating in the freelance voiceover market. And if you're going to have a home voiceover studio, it's got to be good. And if it sounds good, it is good. Uh, right on cue. Got to love that. Anyway, if you want to work with Mr. Whitham, George the Tech, where do they go? You can head right over to George the dot tech. And if that makes your brain hurt, you can Ow. also just put in georgethetech.com. 
That will work too. <laughs> and uh, all my services are available for booking over there, starting with the, the most popular and most affordable sound check service, uh, which is similar to one that Dan offers. Uh, and it's just a matter of you sending in your audio. And I also like to get some photos and a description of what's really going on. And that way I can give you a really clear answer about what I hear in your audio. Very objective, just how does it sound? How's the noise floor? How's the acoustics in the space? How is your mic technique? All that stuff we'll cover in a sound check. And you can go from there all the way to studio design. Whatever you need um, is available. And over at Dan's place, as I was mentioning, at homevoiceoverstudio.com. There what can is. you do over there, Dan? Uh, well, now you can find the Specimen Collection Cup much easier because when you go to the page, <laughs> it's right there. Right where it should be in, in an obvious exact, place. Where it should have been all along, but now mm -hmm. it's up top. Uh, yeah, and for $25, I will do a very thorough analysis of your audio. Uh, and, you know, it's not just what I hear, it's also what I see. There might be some things that you might think are inaudible, but I see them. You know, if you look at a spectrograph and you see a repeating line at 125 hertz, it's like uh, air conditioner, ceiling fan, refrigerator. Fish tank. Yeah. yeah, but yeah aren't, if, there aren't that many of those anymore, are there? No, very, no. Very few. Yeah, the people keep those somewhere else. Um, but yeah, uh, if there are sounds that you don't realize are there, and I can see them, I can hear them, Although you get down underneath 80 hertz, you don't hear them, but the engineer on the other end is going to see the needle moving up that direction and it's going, eh, Or their okay. speaker cones going like this. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yep. So anyway, uh, you, you've been gone for a little bit and uh, you were in, in jolly old England. I was. I, it's my first ever trip to London. Uh, I went there with my girlfriend where we met her mother who flew in and her sister who also flew in. And it was really uh, an eye-opening experience. I, I went there with some expectations. I mean, who doesn't have expectations about what London might be like if you've never been, right? right. Um, but um, I, I kind of went there with just open eyes and ears and mouth and nose and just smelled and tasted and, and just enjoyed the city in a lot of ways but i did gather a little bit of content that i thought is well at least somehow audio related so i thought i could share a couple of things with you guys so first of all uh let's find the one i want to show you so this is this is a clip showing and letting you hear as well what the subway train well this isn't a subway this is called the dlr so this would we call we would call an elevated train this is the sound and a view from the train of looking at my actual hotel, my Hilton hotel. So this is, check this out. Right there's the hotel. That's, that's loud that's on the hotel outside. right there. That's how close the hotel is to the tracks. Right, so when we, when we checked in and I saw the elevated train right outside our hotel, I was like, oh no. Because <laughs> I had this bad flashback of going and checking into the Jack London Inn or whatever it was in Oakland a long time ago, like 30 years ago with my dad, my mom, and the train tracks right outside the hotel. And we were thinking, we saw the train tracks and we're thinking, oh, cool, the trolley is going to go right on by, not realizing that, no, it's not a trolley, it's freight trains. And they were really friggin' loud. Well, in this hotel... You couldn't even hear the train at all. Here, and here's why. Look at, the, look at the windows in the hotel. I was saying earlier how this hotel is super quiet. Look at the windows here. Look at this. They have a double pane, heavy, heavy glass double pane exterior window, and then an interior glass window. With the yeah, and even that interior piece... It rattled a little bit, so they could have done a little better on the on the weather stripping. But um, it, that was even like a, a laminated piece of glass. It was really impressive, the effort that was put into the hotel to keep this, the noise levels down. Yeah, there's nothing like the same sound of a train rambling by when you're trying to sleep. So I'd... Yeah, I mean, they, they didn't mess around. It was, I, I, you literally would forget that there was a train outside that close. That, that's, that's how incredibly quiet it was. I was... 
really impressed. So if you're staying, if you're going to London, here this shot actually shows how close the train actually is. Room is, is right above it. <laughs> there and it is. totally inaudible. You would never ever. So this is a neighborhood of London called Canary Wharf. And um, it's an eastern part of London. And it's an old wharf area that was all for loading fish and stuff. And now it's all giant high-rise buildings. It's like being in the middle of um, Wall Street. It's all banks, yeah. right? But um, you're really close to all these different train lines, and you can get around really easily, and that was cool. Other audio-related stuff that I enjoyed and <laughs> witnessed in um, <laughs> London. Check these are the sets. things you were concentrating on. What is the audio situation in London? Of course. <laughs> I'm obsessed with it, right? Um, this was in the Tate which is an amazing modern art museum in London, um, founded by Her Majesty the Queen in 2000. And this was in one corner of one of the exhibits. He walked into this hall, and this is what you heard. Is that like all the radios playing at once? or That's all, every single radio... I mean, theoretically, anyway, every single radio tuned to some kind of random point. I don't know if it was random or what it was, but it was just idling static of whatever these radios was, were pulling in. Hmm. And occasionally you would hear an actual song, a, song, a strong, clear song would just come through at, at random, which was really, really kind of a trip, actually. I, def I found it like hypnotic and also super nostalgic. I mean, how could you not find that? nostalgic as you're walking around you're looking at all these radios that you remember even either radios you already have like dan you've got a collection i'm sure some of the radios you have are in this pile i can i recognize a few of them yeah although and then, Br british radios are uh, you know there's there are british manufacturers and that's their, true. their their stuff was just a little bit different but. yeah yeah and and then i i have another clip i won't show it but it's me walking around the entire tower showing everything there but that that was just really cool and fascinating i thought that was very very interesting and then on another audio tip from the same museum um this was an art piece that was um made by this artist oswaldo machia or machia um and it was essentially a thousand different bird songs that he had recorded and then as you walk through the exhibit you're hearing them playing through speakers suspended from the ceiling and it, they're, it, they're, he's basically playing back the sound of the birds as though it was a musical arrangement. And on different walls in the exhibit, like this one, he is showing the key, essentially the plan of how everything is, what instrument is what bird, right? And then um, this is the actual master plan of how all the bird sounds are mapped over what a theoretically would be an organ. So imagine a huge church or theater organ but all of the instruments are birds and they're all playing through these, these speakers suspended from the ceiling. Hmm. I don't even know if you can hear them right now. No, I would, the sound is not on, but oh shoot. There it is. Yeah, it's not reading right now. You pretty much had to walk under the speaker to hear it clearly. Hmm. Um, but there are bird sounds coming out of these speakers as it, it's just really fascinating use of, technology music bird sounds all these things combined it was just it was incredibly fascinating yeah the last audio and video uh experience that i'll share if i ha can find the tab here this was um yeah i think i i think i clicked away from it and then lost it i got to go down and see the carnival parade that's in notting hill the village of notting hill and um, the experience of the sound systems that were on the trucks was pretty, pretty over the top. I mean, you, I could not believe the sheer scale of these sound systems that they were carrying around on the backs of semi-trucks pulled through neighborhoods. Like, imagine the loudest car stereo you've ever heard that, like, you're like, okay, that's enough. This is a little obnoxious. Imagine that, but that times 100. And that's what these sound systems were like. Here's, here's a clip of one as it goes by. Here's the back of it, the business end, I would call it. Come on, there it is. Look at that. 
That's that's one heck of a subwoofer. It was insane. And there was that those trucks over and over just going down the street with a huge crowd of people dancing behind them. So it was a, a very sonically uh, varied and interesting trip to London. It was really, really fascinating. But um, I didn't do any work. I didn't bring any microphones. <laughs> I really was pretty much offline the whole time, and it was a joy. It was a joy to be able Great. to do that. I felt yeah. really lucky, to be honest, to run a business and be able to just decide that you're not going to work for a while and do that was, uh, was a real, real treat. And, well, um, so I've only it, been doing that since 2003 and good for <laughs> you. I mean, that is, <laughs> it's hard to do it, but I, man, I loved, I really enjoyed it. And, uh, if you're going to London and you know, you're staying there, I can recommend the, the Hilton Canary Wharf, um, for being a really, really quiet hotel. And you could also shut off the air conditioning. There was a fan control on the wall and you could just shut it off and make it really quiet in there. So that, that was your trip to London. That was my trip to London. So, so because I was off offline and taking a vacation, I didn't really gather a lot of new tech tips and tech news, right. and I haven't really seen that much. Um, but new I did. going on. What have you I, seen, Dan? I talk, did, talk to me. Our friends at Centrance. Oh yes, yes. They have this new thing called the Jasmine. It's not in production yet, mm -hmm. but it looked like a, an improvement over the the MicPort Pro. Oh really? It, yeah, it's it's a it's a pre a mic preamp, mm -hmm. and it has a big VU meter on it, and a limiter, and all these things. And apparently, they're working on it, and uh, they they did all the testing, and now they're ready to start production runs on it, and and then it'll be a nice another great little portable unit that that Centrance puts out. Oh, so cool! We'll see. I'm, check, I'm checking it out now. Yeah, it's called the Jasmine. It's a boutique there mic preamp with limiter and headphone amp. So yeah, so this is this is interesting because what they're doing here is going well. Some people just want a preamp; they don't actually, they don't actually want the AD converter. So right. this is what's so fascinating about high-end audio gear, right? Sometimes the more expensive stuff does less, right? right? Isn't that interesting? So because so it this does is the a, little things better. Right. So this is a $700 unit that does nothing but provide a preamp with a high pass filter and a limiter, which is really obviously handy. Right. Um, but that's what it does. That's it. It's not an interface. It's not a headphone amp, although it does have a headphone. Oh no, I, I take it that back. It does amp. have a headphone amp. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a very niche thing. Uh, so I'm wondering who would really benefit from this. I, I guess if you, Hmm. Probably musicians, but it would work I for voiceover so. if you, you know. And then oh, it would you, definitely work for voiceover. Yeah, like I, it would just be an interesting thing if if you're if you're wanting like a completely super clean. I would imagine it's got no distortion, super super clean. Oh yeah, no, low noise. Their their standards are really really high. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be. But it's interesting that he built it in the same chassis as like the mixer face. Right. So he's making a line of of new products based around that that chassis so that right. that's cool yeah and i like that it has the big vu meter on it always in the green always yeah. in the yellow <laughs> with a yeah. flash of red every now and again yeah no that yeah. that's cool no yeah. I, I i like that he's iterating and creating new products and uh we'll have to see if anybody in the voiceover world finds it to be you know helpful to use something like that and a supplement to their other other preamps and processors and stuff right so maybe he'll send this one <laughs> mm, there you go <laughs> there we go well we've gotten stuff from mike and uh, mike goodman and centrance in the past you know we've yeah we've we've tested the mixer face and we found it fantastic um the mic port pro 2 and 3 now are both yeah, yeah. it's got really that great. limiter on it and you know the people in animation and gaming are really liking that one so that's really cool yeah exactly exactly yeah. So I wanted to throw something out here for the next mm -hmm. few minutes. And if people yeah. have questions on this, they can, of course, you know, they can, they can join in on this. I get a lot of questions about resolution settings. Mm -hmm. You know, we've always, you know, up until now, I'm usually with an MP3. We always say, do it at 44, one K at 24 bit. And I'm getting stuff all over the place. Some people do it at, you know, it, it, you know, 44, one, it's been the standard for a while, but now a lot of video goes to 48. 
You're talking about wave files or MP3 files? Either. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people are, they're, they're, they're being, it, they're, we're being asked for 48, uh, for 48 K, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially by video producers, because that's the standard for video right. for just straight audio. <clears throat> I mean, you can get, get away with, you know, 16 bit and, 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 you know, and, and, uh, and, and the, and the 40, you know, 44 one. Yeah. But for the most part, the, the funny thing is is there's no difference in sound. Now, if someone says they can tell the difference, they're lying <laughs> because between 44, one and 48 K and 48 kilohertz yeah. sample rate. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to notice a difference because yeah. it's, you know, there's a certain frequency range that it covers and it doesn't matter because it's, it's, it's recording sounds that you can't even hear. Right. He's basically, you can tell the sample, this, the frequency range of what the sample rate captures by just taking whatever that number is. 48 K and divide it in half. So now 24 is the maximum frequency you can record. Right. 24 kilohertz. Now I don't know the last time you had your hearing checked, but I fairly recently <laughs> I did it on, I actually did my hearing test on an app. Oh, really? there's an app called Mimi M I M I. Right. That lets you do your own hearing tests, similar to the way you would do it. An audiologist for hearing aids and stuff. Right. Um, but anyway, you're, most of us won't hear anything above 14, 15 kilohertz anymore. Right. You know, That's if you're right. under 20 or under 30, you might be able to hear above that, but none of us can really hear that stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. So going even higher to 48 K or 41 to 48 doesn't, does not make any difference. Yeah. I had a hearing test fairly recently, you know, I was my, I have tintinous and it's, it was getting oh, bad for a while. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the audiologist is like, your hearing's perfect. It's pretty good for your age. I'm like, don't tell my wife. Oh, <laughs> 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 well, yeah. I mean, when I did that home test, I hadn't done a, I hadn't done a proper hearing test in quite a while. I used to get my hearing tested at the NAM music trade show. The house ear Institute yeah. would bring in a, a, a big truck. You know, and you'd go inside and they had the audiology booths and the whole thing and they'd print out your report. And it'd been a long time since I did it. So finding this Mimi app, um, it was kind of cool. It was, yeah. it, it was a pretty legit. I mean, it played the very quiet tones that got descendingly more and more quiet as they played. And then it would tell you to let go of the button when you couldn't hear them anymore. Mm. And uh, my, it said I was about 10 to 15 decibels below optimal. But they said that, but it, but it said that was normal yeah. for my age. So I was yeah. glad to see that. Yeah. I had one where it was like progressively people talking louder in the background and you had to pick out Ooh. the right sentence and I got them Ooh. all. Right, so. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's something where hearing aids help a lot. It does. So, so yeah, I mean, I know another reason why recording at sample rate 48 K can be helpful is if nowadays we're asked to be doing multiple things at once. Right. Right. Not just record, but now we want to record and be on Zoom or record and have something else going on. And as I like to say, as I've been saying recently, describing sample rate and what's called word clock um, is you want everybody to be dancing to the same music, the right. same beat. Um, if you've got, you know, your DAW is recording a wave file at 44.1 and you're running Zoom and Zoom wants to be running at 48 kilohertz. You're going to have problems, clicks right. and pops. Now the Mac OS seems to somehow on the fly sample rate convert because rarely have I had clicks and pops and glitches and I've never really given it that much thought. Um, so it is definitely best practice to make sure everything's the same sample rate. But if you're on Mac, you might be okay and might cause it's sample rate converting, I think. But I know in the windows environment, boy, things just do not they do not get along well at all if they're not the same. We sample told you. Rate. you got to really, yeah. Stick with Mac if you're doing, you're doing audio. But, you know, you got what you got. So anyway. Yeah, I mean, if you're on Windows, everything's got to be on the same sample rate. Window, I would say 48K across the board is the way to go. And it doesn't matter what they ask for. Just record at that sample rate, and you can convert it later. Right. Just, just sample rate convert before you send the file. And... uh not a big deal. In fact, 24 bit, I recommend to record at as well. And then if you need to send it in 16 bit, again, you can, you can save it as 16 bit. Yeah. 
Well, you know, people have been asking a lot of questions. So we're going to take awesome. a break and we're going to get into answering all these questions because that's what we really love to do. Not that your trip to London wasn't fascinating <laughs> and not that 44 for one versus 48 K isn't, isn't, you know, maybe it's a little even, geeky for some even more fascinating <laughs> this stuff you guys are going to dig. So we're going to take a break. We'll be right back here on voiceover body shop tech talk right after these messages. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the voiceover body shop. You know, I used to live in Buffalo, New York. But now, I'm in sunny Southern California. But no matter where you are, when you need equipment strictly for voiceover, there's only one place to go. And that's voiceoveressentials.com. And right now is the time to get with Harlan Hogan's Signature Series V01A voiceover microphone. They also have the fabulous Centrance MicPort Pro 2 with limiter in stock. In fact, it's the only version they sell. Now, a limiter is a must-have, especially when recording oneself with no engineer to ride gain for you. By the way, it's the most amazing limiter they've encountered. It's impossible to detect, and it's incredibly quiet. And they've upgraded the Porta Booth Pro Quick Script LED light. Now it has two goosenecks, all the better to read your script. Go on over to VoiceOver Essentials right now to get these great VoiceOver Essential products. Man, that's a great spot, Dan. Killing it. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to do my live spot because I don't like producing anything, and I'm going to talk about our great friends over at Source Elements. Well, boy, I'll tell you, by now you have heard a lot about Source Elements Company, and if you haven't, well, you're new to the show, and then welcome. Um, but Source Elements creates software that allows studios to interact and connect and record audio real-time in very high quality. And that's their, their primary software made by Source Elements that the voice acting Industries have all used for a long time. A lot of the industries anyway, that tends to be the bigger production quality, higher budget, commercial, things like that. They use Source Connect, and that's because it's a dedicated application that does one job, and that is capture the audio, stream it to the other side, and bring the audio into their system. And it does it extremely reliably, much more reliably so than anything that could run on a Google Chrome browser. Because the problem with browser-based audio apps is the browser changes and updates all the time. If you, you probably have no idea what version of browser you're running because it updates constantly, probably almost every week. And so that's a moving target. And that creates really hard to describe and very difficult to trouble, troubleshoot glitches. And that's not happening with Source Connect. It's a dedicated app designed to do that one job. And it's supported extremely well by the support team at Source Elements. So if you want to give it a try and you want to understand why it is the tool of choice in pro audio recording remotely, um, you can do that. Go over to source-elements.com and get yourself a 15-day free trial and start experimenting and poking around and testing it. And if you need help, don't worry. They've got great support as well as myself at George the Tech and our team here. We can give you extra white glove support if you need it. Well, anyway, let's get back to the show right after this. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. All righty, and we're back. 
And it's time for... Tech Talk and Your Questions Lightning Round. Because we got a pile of them here. Nice. All right. We People have been storing them up over the holiday. I, I know. Just on Labor Day. And I'm glad everybody's here on Labor Day. You could be out barbecuing. Of course, you don't have to do anything here in Southern California. You just go out in your backyard and hold a couple of hot dogs, and they're going to cook. It's, <laughs> it's only 106 in my backyard right now. Oh, man. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, we got a, we got, we have an actual write in one. Somebody actually emailed us a question, which you can do by writing to us at the guys at vobs.tv. And if you write your question in before we do the show, you get to be first in the queue. So mm -hmm. Steve Griffin asks, he says, I'm trying to lower my noise floor in my home studio. Aren't we all? I'm currently running a noise floor between minus 57 dB and minus 55 dB. I'd like to lower it to at least minus 60 dB. Do you have any suggestions? Uh, well, it, it would help to, to hear what, what the noises are. My philosophy is everything is physical. Find the source of the noise and turn it off. The thing is, is we, we were talking about this a little earlier. You, you don't necessarily hear all the noises in your house. Your brain has tuned them all out. Uh, your refrigerator, uh, your air conditioning. You know, it's not like you're consciously, you know, listening for this stuff. And when you go in, if you go into a booth or you're in, in, a, in a certain room, you really don't hear it. But our friend here does. Mm -hmm. uh, here's everything. And it puts it on your hard drive. So it's important to really stop and think and go, is something making noise, close your eyes for a second and listen. And your brain will go, oh, yeah, yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah okay. We're going to turn on this frequency, and then you hear your refrigerator and you hear the air conditioning. Those things really have to be off unless you're in a really sound tight room. Yeah, the air conditioning is a big one. Um, just noise and traffic noise from even a road that could be a mile away. If there's enough of it, it will show up as rumble, the little wave, the little wave, wavy line in your wave in your waveform and a lot of that can be reduced by just using a high pass filter and all of a sudden you can lower the noise floor the effective noise floor of your recordings several db sometimes 20 db yeah. depending on how much noise it is at that low frequency so you might be able to go from minus 57 db to minus 70, 70 yeah, by just exactly. applying a high pass filter so without having the audio to, to analyze it's that's the best we can do for you, but you can always get us get a sound check or use Dan's specimen collection cup, and we'll really analyze it closely. Yeah, but a high pass filter is actually a lot simpler than it, it really helps. Okay, uh, you get the one from Marlene Goodman. Yeah, this was also from email. Yeah. Um, how does one learn the setup and operation of the home technology? I'm I'm going to assume Marlene in this case means. <laughs> <laughs> home studio technology yes that that would be us well, uh boy you know where do we you start? come to the right place <laughs> you come to the right place watching every episode of of tech talk you know you're going to learn a heck of a lot watching all of our tech talk episodes marlene so i can recommend that because that's free yeah uh, that's a really good place to start uh, we've covered a tremendous amount of ground um there's webinars dan has taught a lot of webinars i am still teaching webinars as well um you can look for webinar content uh, about what you want to learn. Um, there is obviously a lot of YouTube videos, which some are good, some are not. Um, so, you know, take those with a grain of salt. Um, they're not always appropriate for your needs or always accurate. So check your source. Make sure if you're watching YouTube videos, make sure you know it is, who it is you're learning from. Right. And, sure and they, also imp important that if you were listening from the top of the show, you can work with Mr. Whittem here, or you can work with me and go one to our one. websites and we will, t we will teach you from soup to nuts. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll teach you <laughs> what you need to know. Like the key thing is we'll yeah. teach you what it is that you need to know, because that's the thing. If you start studying the books, there's a few right there on the shelf. <laughs> if you start reading all yeah, the books, you can get, you can start drowning in knowledge and information and learn a lot of stuff you don't need. So working with Dan or I one-on-one -on -one will give you a concentrated piece of, you know, helpful information at the pace that you need to learn. You might learn at a different pace. 
than you can handle on a YouTube video. You might want to just write things down longhand. That's fine. You know, we'll, we'll work with you directly, but the key is to, to learn what you need and not learn everything because it's right. a big distraction from being a voice actor to, to learn all of audio engineering. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, we've been able to break it down into some very simple things and, uh, yeah. we will, uh, you know, if you talk to us, you know, you set up a, a consultation with us, we will, we will set you straight and relieve all of your tension about it. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Holman's got an interesting question. Our very uh, says, own. Yes. Uh, have any tips for using the Rode video mic go to with an iPhone for recording videos? I'll be using it to record on camera, self taped auditions. You mean this guy? Yeah. Dan, Dan, Dan has it. And we used it to do the, oh, the tour over. of. Mojave, Mojave microphone and it uh, worked great. It worked great. It's, 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 you know, it's like a little 416 and you just mm. mount it. Teen, teeny weeny shotgun yeah. with, with the iPhone. I mean, the I mean, you, you, the, ha you have to have that cord, right? Dan, you have to That's have a this very, very special, special cord, cord that does not know? come with the mic, right? Which I ordered too. And just in case I break this one, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it plugs right into your phone. The phone immediately recognizes it as your uh your mic and then you just use it you know if it's mounted with if the the phone is mounted on a tripod or a, on a selfie stick or something mm -hmm. this particular device allows you to also put that on there with it and then you have your phone i can see my phone right here and then you can take your phone Wait, it's a strong it. spring on there and there's a really strong spring on there yeah Anyway, so you, you get this on a selfie stick and then all of a sudden you've got real professional audio with this and it works great. So. Yeah. Yeah. For doing self tapes, you want to get it probably within three or four feet. Don't put it too far away from you. Um, you know, obviously mic technique, the closer the mic is, the more better it's going to pick you up, the more directly it will pick you up. Um, you still want to make sure that you don't have a super reverberant room, you know, right. so if it's an empty room in your house or spartan room it's going to sound pretty reverberant yeah. so you might want to throw some blankets on the floor you might want to make sure you have a rug you know do whatever you can exactly to get rid of that echo but it yeah 100 bucks yeah. plus like a 30 dollar cable is that what it is 30 dollars I, I wonder how it would do with for remote for doing voiceover somewhere well you did some early tests and the noise floor of the mic was pretty good right it was excellent like it, it, it wasn't was noisy yeah. Um, it had a pretty pleasing sound. It, it's a pretty mind blowingly good mic for, yeah. for a hundred bucks. I mean, it's, a, it's with that cable, it's a $130 shotgun USB mic. Exactly. Pretty amazing. Not, not a lot of those around. No. Okay. Uh, Jeffrey Hedquists, uh, from YouTube. He says, I have a null spot on my preamp section of my Apollo twin remedies Ooh. Buy something else. <laughs> <laughs> a null spot. Oh, meaning if as he's turning the dial, as he's using the preamp in it, something goes, and then it jumps off. So he's got a dead spot. Oh, that's the Neve preamp. Uh, the gain knob, as you turn it to about 55 dB, yeah. there's an off position. Oh. And if that's the one he's talking about, I mean, he didn't say what plug-in he's using or whatever, but I'm assuming if that's what he means... There is literally a position on that knob. It goes, you know, 40, 45, 50, 55, off, 50, 60, 65, 70. Rupert's dead. We can't ask him why he did it that way. <laughs> but, <laughs> but there's literally an off position on the gain dial, right? And because the plugins, if you're using a Neve plugin, are modeled over the real, after the real exact actual hardware, it replicates that same quirky um, design. So maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Put it in your chat, in the chat, if, if I'm completely off base here, or if, if you are using the Neve plugin or something, Terry, cause, uh, yeah, that's, that's an odd one. I don't know why that would happen otherwise. Yeah. A lot of people are, you know, has been asking about the, the Apollo twin, you know, cause I, I need a limiter. Well, like, you know, you're, you're buying an awful lot just to get a limiter. You don't, yeah, really, that's a big expense and a big yeah. learning curve just exactly. to have that. The Micport right. pro with the limiter is. For 300 bucks is a way better value and there you go. way simpler to use. Yeah. All righty. You get the next one from Red Cabin Acoustic. All right. Um, this one's from YouTube. 
what are the best, in quotes, VO conferences to go to for newbies and those that have some work under their belt? I don't know if I can rank them right now. They oh, each have I their, can. They each have their, <laughs> their uh, strengths and weaknesses. I, I don't know. What, what would be the top one that comes to mind, Dan, that it, oh, that's a no-brainer? If there how about one. that one? Um, oh, well, of course. <laughs> No, that, yeah. no, that's absolutely true. We haven't had a Wovo in a while. And no, we've not uh, had a WovoCon, and we're WovoCon doing WovoCon is a it's a conference put on by voice voiceover professionals for voiceover, voiceover professionals. professionals. Yeah, right. and it's yeah, it, and we're a not for profit. By the way, I'm president of World Voices, but uh, yeah, we're doing this uh, May fourth through sixth in Orlando, and it's a very different type of conference. Great for people who who want to really learn from everybody else, and not like just attend all sorts of, you know, uh, going to, uh, you know, different, different talks and stuff like that. You get to really participate in it. And that's one of the reasons that we really like doing it. So, uh, yeah, this one would not be targeted to the newbie who's someone that's just getting started. A right, lot of exactly. the other conferences are really good at catering to the new voice actor, like, um, VO Atlanta and, uh, uh, What's another one? What's the one in the fall? That's voiceover. That's voiceover. They have a one ton conference. of like, I want to get into voiceover topics, right. you know, that uh, right. are covered by coaches and yeah. things well, like that. Well, you and I are going to VO North next weekend. Yeah, we are. Yeah. VO North, which is sort of the, well, it's the conference of Canada, right? I, yeah, I right don't for the time being. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to do it anymore. But Yeah, uh, this could be the last one is my understanding. Yeah. But So uh, we're going and we're going to have a great time. Because we get to see all of our friends that we haven't seen for years and years. It's that's that's a big reason why these conferences are so popular. It's, you know, a lot of folks go to not necessarily learn a lot. They maybe will get a few golden nuggets. Right. But they go for the social aspect, you know, and that's that's a good reason. That is a good reason to go if you have the, if it's in your town, you don't have to spend a tremendous amount of money to get there and, right. and things like that. So yeah. we're, we're going to do a few uh, mini cons with uh, World Voices over the next couple of years, and they'll be those will be regional conferences, so you can drive there, which will be really great. That's good. And, uh, so mm -hmm. we'll be we'll be talking more about those as well. Oh, and also, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be going to Mavo in uh, Washington in November. Oh, I always forget about that one. Yeah, that's the Mid Atlantic. Mid Atlantic conference. conference, yeah, that's going to be out uh, near Dulles Airport, and I'm going to mm -hmm. be speaking at that. So, if you want to learn about home studio stuff or anything that has to do with voiceover, is that one targeted towards a, a wide range of skill? Yeah, that's that's a that's a wide ranging one too. So, but sort of, but, but sort of a regional one. Exactly. I mean, people come from everywhere, everywhere, I don't mean, they? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's good. That's a good one to go to. Cool. Okay, you get. Let's see here. Uh, and we the wrist. Animal? Yes, yes, I have a question. Well, that's good. Uh, it's about a scratching noise that levels out at 143 to 153 dB in my, I think she means K. If it's 143 dB. Ah! Yeah, my, yeah, yeah. That must my, be. Yeah. In my pause spaces in Adobe Audition. It looks red in the wave file and gets more profound at the outtakes of my cut and paste points. Weird science freaking me out. Thanks. This sounds like an editing thing. Hmm. Uh, this is a matter of when you're editing audio, you can't cut right in the middle of a, of a, of a sound you've got, it's gotta be at the crossover point. And that's the, the center line, you know, where you've got the waveform like this. I, I, I suppose I could show that. Why don't you, you talk for a second while I set okay. that up and I'll show people how to, what, what I'm talking about. Yeah. I mean, I don't, we, she might be talking about what Dan's describing, which is a discontinuity, which is where. There's two, you know, when you see your waveform and you zoom way in there, they, when you make an edit point, sometimes the two halves of that, where the edit point occurs, don't actually meet in the middle like this. They actually meet at two different spots. Right. And when that happens, that's called a discontinuity and that makes a click. But I'm not sure if that's what quite what she's describing. I, I'm a well, little bit I mean, perplexed. She said, cause she's mentioning a specific. I think she means frequency. Um, yeah. She says, no, it's in the non-speaking area. So she's talking about during the room tone, there is something that's in there that happens to be in 146 kilo or hertz. Oh, well, so that sounds some, like there's some it, tone or some noise in her, in her yeah, space that's in that frequency range. Yeah. It's probably in a fan. If you can all see this, 
we were talking about this red line in the middle here. Yeah. That's the crossover point. If you edit right. from that point over, you will not get a click, especially if you go back over to the next crossover to point. the next crossover point, right. Right there. And if you do that, you'll notice that it's a nice smooth transition, uh, even though we we're dealing down to the sample level here. And I think Adobe Audition is auto-fixing that now, isn't it? It does. Isn't it auto? That's the whole thing about Adobe Audition is that yeah. you know, whenever, whenever you do those types of things, it creates that crossover point anyway. So that's. Oh, she's saying the wave goes from negative 43, D, I guess DB. She didn't put the. And when you're putting in notes, make sure you tell us the units. So if you're talking about yes. 43 DB versus 43 kilohertz or frequency. Whatever. But um, from negative 43 to negative 53. So that's the range in which that uh, sound is hovering. Okay, she means DB. Yeah, so there's some tone that's hovering in that decibel range. And it's probably um, some of that background noise we were just talking about. Yeah, it must be some kind of room tone or just some equipment that's in an adjacent room or a unit or something that's creeping into your space. And that's, why you, that's, and that's why you send us a sample so yeah, we can we hear, hear this. It. it takes two seconds for us to go, oh, and yeah, I know what that is. It's a, it's a refrigerator. It's your air conditioning. Yeah. We're yeah. rarely totally stumped. I mean, it, it can happen. If there's something like wrong with the equipment, that's where the noise is originating from inside the mic or something like that, that's a whole different thing. Um, yeah. But uh, that's pretty rare that that happens. Yeah. Uh, question from Grace Newton. This is a good question. She says, I'm about to hang my cloud using teacup hooks and blankets. <laughs> Should there be a space between the ceiling and the blankets, how much? Well, it's a matter of, you, yeah. it's, it's a sort of a, a trial and error thing. Wouldn't you say it's like, well, yeah. okay, you start at like, you know, six inches and then, you know, it takes a couple of people and you lower it and you find out where the sweet spot is for that, for hanging that. So it's blankets. So that means the thing's going to hang down. I'm assuming it's going to hang down kind of like a, like a curve. Right. Because it's suspended from the edges, or is it? I don't know how she's exactly hanging it with teacup hooks, but if it's just hung <laughs> from the perimeter, it's going to kind of pillow. Right. Right. It's going to build. It's going to billow out in the middle, so it's automatically going to have a gap from the ceiling. It's going to have a gap of several inches. Um, that's. Well, let's let's take a look. <laughs> yeah, we've got yeah, some you've got some here. clouds that are in your in your space. Yeah, these are made out of rigid acoustic. Uh, treatment yeah with a wooden frame right and you can see how i how i hang them there they're all about six to inches to a foot off the ceiling I, it's I while well, it's 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 an arched ceiling so that's, yeah it's it's that's right it's not a flat ceiling so it's a little more complicated here yeah. but um yeah it uh, my understanding is that there's a law of diminishing returns uh, if if you leave too much of a gap that isn't beneficial so i've heard somewhere between Four and six inches off the ceiling is beneficial. That's yeah. what I've read somewhere. <laughs> I can't remember where or who, and I think it depends on how thick the paneling is and et cetera. So if it's just a blanket, I don't know how much of a difference it's going to really make, whether you have a gap there or not, because it's not very thick. So. All righty. All right. Why am I, why am I jiggling max, like that? You're max headrooming. <laughs> I'm, 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 well, I no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> uh, Maybe we can clean it up in a break, but yeah, we, well, uh, we'll we'll get to that in a second. Or I just switch back to the other cam I was using, and then uh, yeah, that see. might help. Camera, <laughs> Look, that's a weird. That is kind of totally weird, like Max it? Headroom, huh? There we while go. While you're doing that, in other I'll, news, while you're doing that, I'll go into the Lisa or Linda Joyce Miner's question, okay. and she says, "What home studio problems come up the most?" <laughs> well, you're hearing them all tonight, you're, you're, folks. You're, you're really, you are hearing them all. The ones you're hearing are, are a lot of the common ones, like noise. What is this noise? How do I get rid of this noise? What, why is this noise happening? Uh, those are a lot of them. Um, it's really noise-related. Um, why do I sound like I'm in a box? Why do I sound like I'm in a tube? Tube, yeah. Uh, why do I sound like I'm really far away from the microphone? Um, let's see. Yeah. How yeah, do you, you record voiceover? How do you edit it? You know, these are a lot of the common questions. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's that I, it's like, yeah. Why does it sound 
I mean, how many times have we done this? Yeah, why does it sound like a... Uh, why I'm does talking... it sound like I'm so far away? Because it's a side address mic, and it yeah, only why, works why on one side. Like a, yeah, exactly. You might be talking the back of the microphone. That That's a very common mistake, because these large diaphragm condenser mics are a little less obvious which is the right side to talk into. Most of them have a clear logo badge or something, whereas a mic like this is pretty painfully obvious where to talk into it, because it plugs in here and it points this way right. but anyway yeah those those are some of the most common questions for sure is really about sound in the room uh, uh, what the mic is hearing the acoustics uh issues that are causing a weird sound um and i i really like to um relate sound with light or photography right because okay. people think visually more right i mean it's easier to explain what it looks like to be out of focus you know we all know what out of focus what what is my it sort of looks right. like that that so what dan is doing is adjusting the focus ring on his camera he and i both have webcams that allow you to manually focus right unfortunately microphones don't have a focus ring right they don't have a knob that lets you fine-tune the focus the only way to adjust it is by properly placing it so moving it further and closer tilting it higher and lower, you know, moving it around your face, you know, that's how we, we focus the microphone. Right. So I like right. using, I like relating sound with, with photography or video because I Give feel like too. that kind of, that, that fits. And then like light, the light you see that lights my hand up, that is the acoustics for sound, right? So the light for a photo is the acoustics for the recording. So better acoustics, better recording, better lighting, better video. Makes total sense to me. All right. What else we got here? Uh, Terry Briscoe. Terry. Any advice on how I can improve me ear? <laughs> I think he's <laughs> my ear. Me, yeah. Unless you're just talking like a pirate. Hey, can you improve me ear? <laughs> um, how do you improve your ear? Ear training. Yeah. Practice. Practice, practice, practice. It's... Uh, you have to understand, George and I have been doing this for so long that we know what it's supposed to sound like, whistle. Um, there are things that go wrong. We know when things are right because we don't hear anything else. But you know how I always talk about uh, signal to noise ratio and stuff like that? You know, right. the signal being your voice, noise being anything that's not your Everything voice. else. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> just try and find where that works best for you and uh and and listen it's like all right that's not my voice and you have to listen to your your recorded files and you'll figure it out and listen to uh listen to commercials right listen to well produced well recorded audio right now don't expect your dry audio to sound exactly like those because they obviously have some processing but generally commercial voiceover audio is not super duper processed right Promos, trailers, radio production, that stuff is highly, highly processed. So it's not a really good one to compare against, but listening to good, well-produced, high-budget television commercials, the voiceovers are very, very well recorded, and you'll, notice, you'll start noticing something common between them um, about how they sound and why they sound that way. So exactly. that's probably part of that, that, part of that ear training. Yeah. And it's just rep it's repetition and it's time. It, it takes years before you just naturally understand what good sound audio sounds like. All right. Well, speaking of time, we're out of it right. <laughs> for this hour anyway. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to re-rack it to talk with Mark Cashman. So uh, don't go anywhere. We've got lots of great stuff to talk about here on Voice Over Body Shop. And if you got a question for Mark, you can throw it in there now. That'll help too. Anyway, we're going to take a break. I'm going to figure out what's going on with my camera, and we'll be right back here on Voice Over Body Shop, so don't go away. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> Hello, VOBS viewer, listener, aficionado, fanatic. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. I'm the same as you. I love this show, and I'm glad you're watching. Um, last week, 
We opened and closed registration with one week. That's the only week it's open for the VO Heroes Pro training curriculum. If you want to build a, a spectacular, successful, and practical, and satisfying voiceover uh, career, I'm here to help you with that. And one of the big questions we got was, that's a pretty hefty price tag. Do you have a payment plan? And I'm happy to tell you that I created one. For those of you who looked at the price of the incredible value that you were getting, but the price was a little outside your budget, how do we do this? So we have an option of a three or a four month plan. All you have to do is go to voheroes.com slash go. That's voheroes.com slash go. And you'll get all the details. If you want to jump in, but you didn't have all the money all at once, we can give you a payment plan. Check it out at voheroes.com slash go. And I'll see you inside the program. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. You are. And guess what? We're going to start warming up for, for Mark Cashman here in just a minute. Let me just adjust my focus just a little bit Speaking here. Speaking of focus rings, you can adjust yeah. the focus on that. We, okay. Yeah, these cameras we've got, we've been trying a lot of different cameras over the years, but I like these ones that you can manually, once you get it focused right, it stays there and you don't have to mess with it. And All righty. All right, where were we? Okay, that's right. Well, we have to, uh, first off, we have to uh, talk about people who donate to the show, which we really appreciate, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. Our donors of the week are Robert Leadham. Oh, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the wrong donors. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, moving down to Steven Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Tom Pinto. Shelly Avellino. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Hey. Hey. Lee Penny. Jonathan, and Jonathan Grant. Uh, Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Shana Pennington Baird, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley. Trey's been with us for years. Hey, Trey, Diana Birdsall, and also. Sandra Manwiller. All yeah. righty. Uh, hey, remember homevoiceoverstudio.com. If you want to work with me, it's easy enough. Just go over there and you'll see all the things we do. Or if you want to work with George, go over to just head over to George the dot tech. All right. Let's see. We need to thank our amazing sponsors with whom this show would not actually happen. Uh, <laughs> like Har yes. I know Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials, uh, voiceover extra source elements, voheroes.com, voiceactorwebsites.com, JMC demos, and worldvoices.org, the industry association of freelance voice talent. All right. Thanks to Jeff Holman. For great job in the chat room. Cause questions make this whole thing work really well. That's uh, right. Sue Merlino sweating her tuchus off because oh. her air conditioning isn't working. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah, Our oh, yeah. director and Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. All right. We're going to re-rack it and we're going to talk with Mark Cashman. So don't go away. We'll be right back. But anyway, have a great week. We'll see you next time on VoiceOver Body Shop. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. BS.